last time you were in the playoffs, uh, you, know, you made a couple game winners, and you know, it seemed to be something that has become such a big part of, of your kind of skill set and persona on the court these days. So what's it like to see uh, a teammate that clearly you have great chemistry with that you wanted to have be in L.A. with you be the guy to make that shot and, and win the game for you guys? Uh, did you see my reaction? That's <laughs> all smile. No, nah, did you see my reaction after you made it? I, I, I'm, uh, I didn't get to see you it. You didn't get to I see it? Oh, uh, well, I tried to chase him down just like every last one of the teammates and, and staff that we had out there. Um, a special moment for a special player. Happy to be a part of it. What is it, what does it take to take on the pressure to make a, to first of all, want a shot like that, to take it, to make it? Um, and what do you think the fact that he was able to have that kind of moment would do for his confidence going forward in situations like this? Well, it's not about making a shot. It's about having a belief of just taking it for one and living with the result. You know, um, I, I think right back, you know, to the, our game right before uh, COVID hit, um, we played Brooklyn at home and he had a similar shot right there on that left wing, right in front of their bench for us to win the game and he missed it. And uh, he was down on himself, but at the end of the day, I told him, I said, listen, man, I, I, if you open and, and I, I was able to drive the, you know, that particular game and find him wide open and he just missed it. But it's just the, the confidence to take the shot. You're not going to make them all, but the, the belief that just take it and, 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 and live with the results is what it's all about. And, and, you know, tonight was, you know, his moment. Tonight was his moment to just, you know, find a space, um, you know, hunt the ball down. Uh, you know, in our top 10 and assists, one of our top 10 and assists leaders in Rondo was able to find him and he knocked it down. Um, it was a big time, big time play. <clears throat> Alan, Kyle Goon. No, it's not about an individual matchup. It's about us trying to execute and him just coming through for us. And, um, you know, that's what he did. It, it wasn't, okay, you know, Joker, your turn, my turn. Well, no, it was just about playing the game and, and finding ways to try to make an impact. And, um, you know, obviously those two big shots he had at the end, one was the floater to take the lead, and Joker was able to get the tip in, and then him, he comes back with the three. Um, you know, just a, you know, just a big-time plays, like I said, for a big-time player. Okay, Rachel? I don't know. Um, it's definitely an AD question, but um, just happy to have him. Um, I know what he brought to the table. I know what he's about. Um, I know his skill set, and um, you know that's why I wanted him here so so badly. Chris. No, I mean, that's what this floor right here that we're on right now is all about. It's the practices, it's the shoot arounds. And we talk about every, every single scenario possible. Up three, down three, up two, down two. Do we have a foul to give? Do we not? Do we have a timeout? Do we not? Are we going full court, half court, BOB, which is baseline out of bounds, SOB, sideline out of bounds. You know, you talk about all those things. And for, if you want to be a championship ball club, you have to be able to do that on the fly. So knowing that we didn't have a timeout, we were able to get into a situation, into a set that we've worked on in practice and get right to it. And the first option was for me, if Doe saw me over the top, if not, the AD flashes in the rest is history. Dan? LeBron, you said it's not making the shot, it's taking it. Caruso stepped into a shot similarly, took it right away. Um, he's been really vocal in, in, in huddles and stuff like that. Where does he kind of think? Uh, when you're trying to play high level basketball, you got to have high level IQ players. <clears throat> and he's one of them. And not only does he have high level IQ, he also plays with a high energy. 
and we know we're going to get out of him every night. It's not about him making shots, um, but we know he's going to defend um, and he's going to play um, at a level that he's capable of playing at. And we all know that once he checks into the game every single night. So we know what to expect out of him. And you know, to be honest, when he makes shots, it's, it's, it's extra credit for us. Um, but he puts that work in you know, on his offensive skill set to get better and better. And, um, you know, we love everything about him. Willing leader, too, it seems like. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we'll throw it back to Tanisha. Hey, LeBron, Mike Trudell in L.A. Uh, if I could jump off the court for a second, if I read the, sh the uh, sweatshirt correctly, is that change isn't made from watching on the sidelines or more than a vote sweatshirt that you wore on the way in. I just wanted to ask you about that and where your mindset is uh, as, these, as this run continues uh, and where your mind is outside of the court. Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I know we're here you know, playing the game, but I'm not losing the, the fact of you know, what's important as well. And more than a vote is about, you know, protecting black voters and, and, and voter suppression that goes on in our communities. Um, you know, and, and like you said, it's not changes are made by sitting on the, uh, on the sidelines. And, and that's one of our, that's one of our slogans. And, and we're very proud of that. And, you know, getting, you know, the people that want to join us, getting them gear and wearing the T-shirts and wearing the hats and wearing the hoodies. Because when they go in their community, it's something they can continue to enlighten, continue to educate, continue to, you know, make people uh, empower uh, about this movement. And, um, you know, because, you know, we always talk about change, you know, in our communities. And, and now we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to, to really create change for the better. And, um, and we look forward to this opportunity. And if I could flip back uh, to, to the court, going back to 2009, remember the bank shot, of course, you do, uh, but the shot against the Orlando. Uh, with, like, what was it like that night going to sleep and I know this is a question for AD too, but what is that to hit a shot that you kind of dream of growing up, right? Isn't, isn't that kind of what that situation is? Um, I mean, to be completely honest, man, um, it was probably one of the greatest moments of my career up until that point. Uh, you know, just knowing the situation, uh, we were about to go down 0-2, um, you know, and we had home court advantage. And uh, we knew how, how powerful that Orlando team was, you know, playing against actually my teammate right now and Dwight. So, you know, for me to be able to, to hit that shot, it was a, it was a huge moment for me. I, I'm still a young, uh, young kid at the time, so um, big time. Um, the one thing I wish AD had tonight with the shot that he made, I wish we were playing at Staples. I wish this, I mean, we miss our fans so much, and I can only imagine, um, you know, I probably would have blew the roof off Staples Center, um, AD hitting that shot tonight in Staples with our crowd. Um, I would have loved for him to have that moment because I know what that felt like for me uh, when I was able to hit that shot, as you mentioned. Uh, versus Orlando in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, game two at the buzzer. Last two questions. <clears throat> yeah, LeBron, AD has talked about just how much he's leaned on you throughout the playoffs. And obviously, he's played outstanding in the Western Conference Finals. I'm curious, what's the biggest thing that you've tried to instill in him during this time? Um, I, I think just staying even keel. That's what it's all about. Um, the playoffs in the postseason, and the more the more you advance into the postseason, um, the emotions and the adversity, and it's going to be a roller coaster at times. And um, if you could just, you know, no matter if you're up, no matter if you're down, being able to keep your composure and keep your your mindset on the main thing is um, is, is very important. Um, you know, and you know this is uh, the furthest he's gotten in his career up until this point, and I'm just happy to be here with him to. You know, give any advice, excuse me, give any advice uh, for him to lean on me or, you know, I mean, to be completely honest, shit, in the second half, I leaned on him, you know, and he brought us home, you know, so I just tried to set the example early on and uh, and we leaned on him, especially in the fourth quarter, and he brought us home. LeBron, you, um, Anthony came to L.A. asking for this pressure and asking for this kind of burden to be a great player in the playoffs. This is obviously a process that you've gone through. What is the, the challenge for an athlete both to ask for that, to seek that out, but then also to perform when that moment comes? Um, I don't know. I think for me personally, um, it's always been about the man in the arena. You know, the quote from Theodore Roosevelt, um, you know, it's about the guy that's in the arena that's you know, that's gone through everything, the blood, the sweat, the tears, you know, and in our situation, the competition, but it's about the, the work that you put in and the belief in yourself. It's not about the, the doubters or the naysayers or the people who, who's going to talk about you and try to slander you and put you down and bring you down every single day. Um, it's not about them because they've never been in the arena. They don't understand. 
So, you know, AD, he know how special he is. And when he don't, I'll be the first one to tell him how special he is. And, um, you know, he wanted to be here. Um, I'm happy he wanted to be here, uh, you know, because if he didn't, we wouldn't have a moment like tonight. So um, that's what it's all about. But, you know, you put that pressure on yourself when you don't really care about what other people think because what other people think don't, it doesn't really matter because they don't understand. Anybody can talk from outside, um, but if they got into the ring or they got into the arena, um, probably 10 times out of 10, they shit the pants.